What's up guys? Welcome back to Angling Attic Pacific Northwest. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nick. Today we're out here on the Oregon coast. This is Tillamook Bay. Uh, we're just about an hour away from uh, peak low tide right now. And uh, I've got a, something new I want to try today. I, uh, I brought a, a poke pole set up for those of you that uh, are familiar with the poke pole. Uh, those who are in an auto, I'll show you that setup once we uh, get out here. Uh, I want to do a little bit of poke pulling during this peak low tide, and then I'm going to grab my gear, make a drive around this bay, and I'm going to head out to this park that you can see uh, way over here off in the distance. And I'm going to make about a two mile walk once I get over there. I'm going to fish my way uh, through the surf all the way down the beach to the uh, south jetty that's over there, and then maybe uh, do some rock fishing off of the jetty as well. So it should make for a, an interesting long day with a lot of walk and a lot of fishing, but uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Ooh. All right, all right, well, so my poke pole set up, you can probably get a better view of it uh, out there. It's just this cheap, $20 rod. It's a little seven foot medium that I had picked up uh, at Bymart. I was going to use it for bass fishing back in the day, but uh, ended up never really using it. So you can see on the tip there, we've got our uh, little coat hanger with a little uh, loop there at the end. And then I'm just running some uh, monofilament down to a number one bait holder hook. So uh, there's all different kinds of setups. This one's pretty ghetto. I think the setup in general is pretty pretty ghetto for uh, just being able to go out and get the job done. It doesn't really matter. So that's going to be that. But we've also got our Akuma Cedros out here. All right, so what I'm going to be using for bait here today is I have a bunch of leftover clam. These are uh, razor clam. They were just thrown straight into the freezer. So I think, I'm, and I've also got some worms, but I'm probably gonna try using those a bit more for uh, surf perch fishing. But I'm just gonna cut some decent little chunks off of here, either use the necks or uh, use the diggers. I'll probably do the necks first and see how those things work out. And if that doesn't work, then we'll uh, swap up some bait. But I'm thinking I'm gonna start out with something like this. And if I need to go uh, smaller, we'll go smaller. I really have no clue what to expect right now. I don't know if these, uh, these razor clams are gonna work out or not. But usually if I've just gone straight into the freezer with them, they usually uh, fare pretty well. Got these little. Oh, where are you going, buddy? I'll let you go. Oh, all right. Let's uh, let's poke some holes, huh? Let's see. Oh man, this is all a new game to me. What we got going on down in there? <laughs> our very first little fish oh man that is way too cool and it looks like a tiny little sculpin oh I meant to go barbless let go <laughs> that is our first tiny tiny little fish all right here you go, buddy. We'll let you get back in there. 
Oh, that is too funny. All right, you know, let's go back to this. This nice big one here. There we go, got it down in this. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. It's it's a little bit bigger. Ooh. A little bit bigger than that first one. Oh, that's actually kind of exciting with that uh, coat hanger being on there. You can still feel the bites. Oh, open up your mouth, buddy. There we go. All right. Well, there's another one. These fish are slowly, slowly, but surely getting a little bit bigger. So I'm actually kind of surprised and uh, not surprised that these uh, little razor clam bits on here are uh, working. All right. Well, those fish are kind of fun, but I want to find preferably something preferably something bigger oh yeah these rocks are no joke out here that is these are pretty slick so i think instead of just really burying this bait in the hook here i'm gonna try i don't want to do it like that i want more it's, no go smaller piece i'm just gonna do it like that and if that doesn't uh seem to work out and then we'll switch it up i think i'm just gonna go to that exact same spot i really want to get a monkey face eel though if i could get a monkey face eel today i would uh probably just pack up and start heading over you can see the south jetty right over there but i've got to drive all the way back into tillamook and go around and then walk about two miles on the beach to uh, get to that point over there. All right, let's catch whatever is in here. Let's see if we can do this without, kind of got to work it with the current that's coming in and out. There we go, get down in there. There it is, and it's in. Now we just need somebody. There we go, there we go. Oh, either that thing is stuck or it's just gonna be a much better fish anyway, oh it's a monkey face eel dude no way and i was just talking oh no no <laughs> you guys we had our monkey face eel no flipping way all right well, we're gonna have to try that again oh that was cool there's got to be just down here but all right, I think I'm gonna set up my bait a little bit better here. I'm gonna let it dangle off just a little bit more so they can actually take more of it. I think the problem was I had it down too far and it wasn't uh, letting it get a good hook set. Oh, that sucks, man. There we go. There we go. There we go. There's a monkey face. <laughs> now, if I can get it up here without falling down. Oh. Woo! There is our very first monkey face deal. That is, that's a win right there. God dang, these things are slick. Oh man, that is too cool. Too cool. All right, Dieter. I went to pull the uh, the hook out of its mouth and it just straight up broke that hook off. But it's not a ginormous monkey face eel by any means, but it is my very first uh, monkey face eel. And I guess for my first one, I uh, probably don't need to be taking home a huge monster, at least with this first one. It'll uh, give me a chance to try it out and see how these things taste. They're supposed to be insanely delicious. Go get this guy in the cooler. There we go. There we go. Another one of these guys. 
Oh man, it's better than nothing though. That is for sure. This uh is a uh, I got to say rather rather fun. Can't believe I've never done this before. All right, dude. This looks pretty good. I just need to find a hole. Oh. That stuff's pushing into a hole. Yeah, maybe I need to work it. Work it further around. I can kind of just see it. Oh, there might have been a fish down there that just came and did something. There we go. There we go. Good, a kelp greenling. Nice kelp little greenling there. <laughs> yeah, doing it this way, you don't give these guys much of a uh, chance to fight. Yeah, I see that you choked that, buddy. Let's see if we can get that out of you. Oh, let's see. There you go. Little kelp greenling. Going back. All right, well, we're getting a few fish on there. That's uh, pretty friggin' awesome. Ooh. We got a fish on. Oh, it was another eel down there. I wanted to show you guys this rod again really quick, just in case you didn't see it when I was up at my rig. But uh, like I said, I know a lot of people use different things, but I guess really the big thing is as long as you've got some sort of rod that's gonna be able to reach out there. I know some people, people use a, PVC and whatnot, but ended up keeping the top eyelet on there, even though I've been thinking about kind of bending it down so it can fit into a holes a little bit better without getting stuck there. Cause obviously if I get into a tight spot that could end up getting caught up, but just about six inches worth of a uh, metal coat hanger, duct taped, also uh, wrapped the metal around the main part of the, uh, the rod there. Seagulls want my bait. So we got the little loop at the top. I wanted to do a, uh, a swivel up there, but I ended up getting this thing twisted and tightened up before I uh, <laughs> realized that I had not put the uh, swivel on there yet. So then my leader was a bit longer. Shut up! <laughs> so I did, I prefer, prefer maybe a slightly longer leader, but I think that's like maybe five, six inches. So I mean, just getting out here trying to figure it out. So I'm just sticking it in the rocks, trying to get it kind of crammed in as far as I can. And then once I feel like I've hit the back of something or maybe even run into a uh, an eel or something, I just kind of pull it out a little bit and you'll feel them kind of tugging. It feels just like a regular little fish bite. As I mentioned, that metal rod gives a lot of, uh, transfers that vibration really well. So you can really feel when something's down there kind of messing around with, uh, with your bait. I think I'm gonna try this a little bit longer and then I'm going to uh, pack it up and head over to the other side before it gets too late. Oh, geez. I did not even realize we had one on there. There's another monkey face eel. These things are so slick. Oh man, there is another one that is just Another little guy. Oh, these guys are scrappy. Yep, dude, you're scrappy. <laughs> oh man, that is just too cool. guys are uh, eating my bait though. Ooh, another little kelp greenling. Oh, come here, buddy. Mm -hmm. 
a little kelp green lean. There you go, buddy. There you go. Another little tiny, tiny, tiny green lean. Little kelp green lean. There we go. Oh, it's another kelp green lean. Just kind of hoping uh, the last one uh, would be, jeez, another eel. All right, little kelp green lean. Going back. This boat just tipped. You guys all right? This guy, you got it. You got about 20 feet until you start hitting the rock area. So you got some space. Man, it feels kind of crappy just being uh, helpless on the bank, but you can see that boat is really full of water out there. I say that for almost all of the places that uh, I go out fishing. But we've uh, wrapped things up over at Bar View Jetty. I'm making my way into uh, Garibaldi right now, then into Tillamook, and then we'll make our way out to the uh, peninsula. But uh, I have to say, pretty much if I were to not catch fish for the uh, rest of the day today, uh, I would actually still be leaving happy. My intention for this whole trip was basically to come out here and get on my very first monkey face eel. And uh, to have been able to have accomplished that uh, definitely makes me a happy fisherman today. Oh. All right, time to do some walking. Well, I can hear the ocean, but I can definitely not see it. We've got that big old sand dune in the way up there. It's been so long since I've been here, I don't really remember exactly what the water looks like, but I think when I did come here years and years ago, it was on high tide and it seemed that this beach had a pretty good slope to it got to find out looks a little rough but Whew. there's the beach oh my god and the jetty is about as far as you can see that way about three and a half hours into uh, incoming tide right now. Let's get down on the beach. We've got the high low rig going. I've just got some of the uh, little two inch Berkeley gulp sandworms on there. I'm gonna go with the two ounce weight and uh, see how that holds up in these conditions. Let's go fish. It's 
Just really hoping there's some fish around. I think I'll probably spend about 10, 15 minutes here kind of fan casting and then I'm gonna start making my way uh, down the uh, beach a little bit more. That is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of walking. I was trying to throw it into this white water that I got right in front of me. Because it seems uh, surf perch really like this rough water that's got more of that bubbly uh, surface to it as opposed to some of these areas that are just a little more cleared out. It's probably one of the dumbest things I've decided to do in quite some time. Oh man. Need to take a load off. So I spent the first couple hours surf fishing, making my way down to the jetty here, and uh, I had three bites the whole friggin' time. And I kept looking down at the jetty and I'm thinking, man, I need to get friggin' down here. And so I decided to just wrap it up and uh, stop fishing and just start beelining for down here. And I didn't realize how friggin' far away this place was. And uh, it sounds like it might be kind of rough right behind us uh, on the other side of the jetty. So I might need to move a little further down uh, into the bay, but there is a bald eagle chilling right over here though. Aye, aye, he's still there. Probably actually try casting a little closer to the rocks too. I think it is time to switch up and go start fishing the jetty if I can. <laughs> this uh, surf fishing is not not happening today. Hopefully we can uh, find something now. Got some bait on, ready to go. Now, there's there's two things that make me very happy about this tiny little catch right now. For one, it is our first catch on uh, the new Cedros. And I did really want to catch one more fish before getting out of here. A little baby kelp greenling. He sings one of my favorite fish. All right, well, not the uh, biggest last catch, but that will be our last catch for the day. I have to make this insanely, insanely long walk back. <sighs> Whew. 
Well, we say goodbye to that place and I will probably not be coming back here and making that long walk. Granted, I might go hit the uh, beach again one of these days. Uh, pretty sure I've got a blister on the ball of both of my feet. Uh, I got my boots wet this morning when I was uh, poke pulling. So I've been wearing wet socks all day, which was totally fine up until I started walking back and all of a sudden I realized that I was getting hot spots and my feet are just friggin' burning. And to uh, top it all off, basically been out here for 12 hours and uh, I left all my water in the Armada, all of my snacks in the Armada. But uh, I guess I, I'm not complaining though. I think that's uh, all part of the adventure and today was uh, quite a fun adventure. Well, as always, I appreciate you guys joining the adventure with me. Uh, as I said, I think today was a lot of fun just being able to get out and uh, do something new. That poke pull, and if you guys have never tried it, simple, simple, simple setup. And uh, it's rather fun to just go out there and poke through the rocks and who knows what you're gonna get. Uh, it was uh, it was actually pretty addicting. So I'm definitely going to uh, improve my setup and get back out and do a little bit more of that. But until next time, again, thanks for watching you guys, but until next time, best of luck to you and hope to see you out on the water.